Chef Juan, how are you? I'm very well. Oh, very tall. I am indeed. <laughs> oh, I love pizza. What's your favorite meal? Fish and chips. Don't worry, darling. I'm here to help. Can I see what's in your bag? Of course. Garlic bread. Mmm. Oh, tortellini. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> pizza, pizza, pizza. <laughs> Don't you ever make your own dinner? Well, yeah, I'll you know, put this in the oven, heat it up. I don't see any vegetables. How often do you eat pizza? Not that often. Oh, lovely cheese, darling. <laughs> do you cook at all? I don't have time. And what is that? Uh, southern fried chicken. I can't help noticing that people eat a lot from all these boxes. Yeah. Here, yeah? Ooh. This is such a lovely town, blessed with plenty of seafood. Every day you see all the fishermen coming with their boats and they bring fish and all that. But yet I don't understand why people are eating from the box. Bacon, BLT, sausage, sausage, sausage. So many sausages, so much fat. When there's fresh food nearby, that's the best way to cook. It's simple, easy and the healthiest way to eat. He's on the lookout for today's willing volunteer to cook with. Whoop. Hello. <laughs> Hi, hi. I'm Chef Wan. Nice to meet you. <laughs> What's your name? Lauren. Lauren. And you? Alice. I see. So what have you bought here? Bought ready-made Indian curry, food. Oh, yes. chicken tikka, chicken kurma. So do you eat them often? All the time. All the time? Do you cook at all? No, I can't cook. And I'm off to university as well and I have no idea how to. <laughs> Sandwiches. Mm. I don't see any vegetables. Don't you eat vegetables? If I could find something healthy that tasted really nice, yeah. then I would eat it, but oh. I find I find junk food tastes ten times better. Do you mind if I come and show you to do a couple of things? No, that would be brilliant. By the time I finish this, you'll probably make me your husband. Come on, girl. Lauren is a student who lives at home. Before she leaves for college, she wants to learn how to cook so she'll survive on her own. I'm 18 and I'm a student currently studying media, hoping to go to Westminster University. Her family are super healthy, eating organic and baking their own bread. She hates their food. Basically, she just eats Chinese takeaways, Indian takeaways, lots of crisps. Hiya. Hello. How can I help you? Can I have chicken with black bean sauce? My favourite foods are probably Chinese and Indian, only because they're quick and easy and they taste delicious. I don't know how to cook them myself. I did make a lasagna once, and I thought it looked amazing, but all my friends said it was disgusting. Um, beans on toast, I know how to cook that quite well, but that's about it. In here, as you can see, we have got everything you can think of that is rabbit food. I don't really know what she thinks, but she just won't go near it. My mum obviously isn't that pleased with my eating habits. She tries and tries and tries to make me eat healthy foods in different ways and everything like that, but I just have none of it because I don't like the taste. If I cook a, a homemade burger with a bit of salad, she'll have that. So she, if, as long as it's got something that's not particularly healthy with it, and she can shove loads and loads of ketchup on top, she will eat a little bit of broccoli for me, but that's, that's it. If Chef Juan could teach me how to make healthy food that tasted delicious, then I would 100% never go to a Chinese again. Thankfully, Chef Juan's cooking is much better than his navigating, and he's confident he can persuade Lauren that home-cooked Asian food is tastier and cheaper than a takeaway. Hello! Ta -da -da! Oh, wow! Mr. Sunshine is here. <laughs> I've got nice goodies for you. Oh, lovely. Let's off to the kitchen. He knows Lauren's eating habits are bad, but there's a real surprise in her cupboards. This looks pretty much healthy. Look at that. You have quinoa and all this fibre pita bread. Who eats all this? Oh, I love all these beans. They're very healthy. Yeah, huh. well, my mum eats that, but I just I don't like any of it. It's too healthy for me. It just oh, doesn't it, taste of anything. Is it why you go so much to all this takeaway stuff and all that, huh? Yeah, but I do like these that are always in my cupboard. Oh, how many do you have in a week like this? Um, I'm not sure it varies, really. So how does your mum think about you eating all this unhealthy stuff when your mum is so healthy? Well, she doesn't like it. She's really disappointed, actually. But I would love to like make her a really healthy meal like she does for me. But I just don't know how. Well, that's what I'm going to teach you now. Something really healthy and tasty where your mum is going to be proud of you. That would be amazing. So what would Lauren normally have for dinner? 
chicken and a black bean sauce mm -hmm. with chips and egg fried rice from the Goodness Chinese. Heaven, your chips is looking very tired, limpy, and shrivel. <laughs> really, Lauren? Rice and chips? Well, it just tastes nice. The flavour in it is just oh. so nice. Oh, it's salty. You know, it's all overcooked. Why, younger like you, are eating all this? I guess there's just no flavour in healthy food, and I, I love the flavour of this Chinese. You know, Lauren, in a lot of Chinese takeaway, they tend to use plenty of monosodium glutamate. Sometimes people have this reaction, their lips can swell, leaves your throat very dry and uncomfortable. Now, the thing with healthy food is easy, huh? you can eat fresh, 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 you know, it's cheap, nothing too expensive, easy to do, and boom. You're gonna have fabulous skin after that, huh? Too much greasy, too much pimples. <laughs> <laughs> and what is this anyway, girl? A fortune cookie. If one can cook, you can cook too. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Wan has the perfect dish for Lauren. Mi goreng, or Chinese chicken with stir-fried noodles. Later, they'll make a prawn and tofu soup too. Now, this particular dish is very famous on the street food of Malaysia. So, everywhere you travel in Malaysia, you're bound to have this dish, yeah? Mi goreng. Can what? you say that? Mi goreng. Mi goreng. Mi goreng. Mi goreng. Yes, darling, <laughs> correct. Now, this is called fish cake. So, what we need to do is just slice the fish cake. Fish cake was originally brought to Malaysia by the early Chinese settlers. It's become an everyday cooking ingredient all over the region. Fish cake is made of pounded white fish. Like tofu, it's cut up and added to lots of different recipes. Every street market in Southeast Asia has stalls selling all kinds of fish product and noodles for making all the most popular Chinese and Southeast Asian dishes, like laxas and stir-fries. Hi, today I'm at the Puda Market. It's the largest food market in Kuala Lumpur. As you can see, this is where you source all your wonderful ingredients, from lemongrass, galangal, you name it, they have it all. And I simply just love right, the colours and the smell. This is the heart of Kuala Lumpur. This is my favourite noodle stall. Now, when you want to make noodle in Malaysia, you go to this noodle stall because they have everything. All the assortment of noodles, as you can see, yellow, yeah, egg noodle with the rice noodle, kuei tiao, and you can even make laksa. And can you imagine all kinds of fish mousse products too, which we call fish balls. In case some of you have never seen fish balls, this is how they look like. Yeah? Ah, look, babola ikan in a packet. I'll buy, yeah? for you don't worry. I want to show my plan out there. Ah, look at all these balls. They're lovely. They're made of fish mousse and they're so nutritious. Yeah? Look at that, full of fish. Yeah? And this is the fish cake, as you can see. Ooh, bubbly. I love it. Look at that, break them. Huh? They're all white. Mm, look at it. It's nothing but fish mousse. <laughs> Even a wet market like this one, full of fresh ingredients, has hawker stalls offering street food for a quick snack. And noodle soup with fish balls is top of the menu. Fish cake, or fish balls, are a relatively unknown ingredient in the West, but can be a quick and easy way to add flavour and texture to a dish. Ooh, the bean sprout, I love this. Do you know why? Because this is high fibre. They are mung bean, soaked in water overnight, and they just kind of like sprout out. Oh. I saw them in your mother's cupboard. I wouldn't know. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And do you like greens at all? Um, not really, no. Now, this is called choy sam or sawi, and it's fantastic. And you know, when you have all this green, you have great skin, and you become very strong, like Popeye, you know, like you eat spinach? Like Popeye, Popeye the <laughs> sailor man, toot toot! So now you slice the chicken very thinly because we're going to cook the chicken very fast because it's still fry. Okay. So therefore, your meat needs to be cut very small and thinly. Yep. This is another very important technique in Asian cooking. Yeah, when you want to cook something really fast on a hot sizzling wok, everything has to be cut into bite pieces. Okay, practice makes you perfect. So, yep. have a go. Okay, thank you. While Lauren carries on chopping, Chef Wan is heading back into town for one Ombaichi challenge. Chef Wan is going to tackle a dish that's not only a Falmouth favourite, but is one of the most popular takeaways in the whole of Britain. Fish and chips. You're a brave man, Chef Wan. This is Harbour Lights. We're a Falmouth fish and chip restaurant. Uh, we've got takeaway as well. We're based right on the quay. We look over onto Falmouth Bay and the working docks and 
No matter what time of year it is, it's just the best view in town. I've been here four years. I'm now the restaurant manager. 2012, we won the uh, Good Catch Award and also awards for our chips in the past as well. Our most popular dish is cotton chips. Our busiest day of the year, we can sell easily 1,500 to 2,000 portions on one shift. Chef Juan, better watch out. Our fish and chips are the best in the county and we will be coming for him. He's going to have a serious challenge on his hands this week. <laughs> Chef Juan wants to check out the competition. Ha ha! Is it all again? Mmm! <laughs> it's so good. Now I'm concerned. How can I even compete with this? Oh, what shall I cook for this challenge? Oh God! I hope it's not a disaster. <laughs> Pulling himself back from the brink of despair, Chef Wan's come up with a dish he thinks will give fish and chips a real run for its money. In Malaysia, we call this pegedil ikan, but in uh, Thailand, they call it tot manpla, or the fish cake. So it's game on. Thai fish cakes with a dipping sauce against good old-fashioned cod and chips. When you use white fish, uh, you must not have bones out there, so use a tweezer. You don't want to choke your husband. <laughs> Fresh prawn. Oh, you can almost smell the ocean, yeah? Now chop, 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 hurry up, Chef Wan. This is Chef Wan's most ambitious challenge to date. Trumping the taste of an iconic British takeaway with his Asian alternative isn't going to be easy. Now we're going to add in this mashed Cornish potato. What goes in here is lovely French bean. Now, for the aroma, I've added some of this lovely makrut lime leaf. Slide them very thinly. And together with that, we're going to add in also my lemongrass, yeah? That's finely chopped with coriander and spring onions to add texture, colour and a kick of flavour. Next comes the egg yolk. Then a pinch each of salt and sugar, a dash of fish sauce and some sambal, a spice mix of pounded chilies and lemongrass. We're going to add some of this lovely coconut cream. Well, for this East Bites West, we're going to compete with those guys up there. They're going to make 20 portions of their fish and chips, and I'm going to make 20 portions of my patties. Sometimes they can be slightly sticky, so what you need to do is just put some olive oil on your palm like that and shape them. If you don't want to use flour, yeah, just use a bit of oil. So there you are. You make them into little balls, and then finally shape them. Nice, huh? See? Simply delicious. Honestly, how can I compete with the fish and chips? But what I can do here is add all these wonderful, you know, spices and great aroma into my seafood and see how the challenge goes down. This is all about the taste, isn't it? Always remember, don't put too much there to crowd them because we are doing shallow frying here. And so I've used only about a tablespoon of oil, as you can see that, that goes a long way. Now, you can even brush them with a bit of olive oil and just bake them in the oven for about 10 minutes. Yeah? Slowly flip them you know, as they brown, about 5 minutes on each side, and turn them round as I always did. You've got to treat them with tender and loving care. Now, as soon as they are firm, as you can see, they're nice colour. Don't overcook them. The patties are ready. And you want to dream them on the paper towel to remove the excess fat. Now, the question is, can Chef Wan persuade the farmer's flock to pick his delicate Thai fish cakes over local favourite Robin's fish and chips? Oh, that's really nice. That's delicious. Chef Wan's Thai fish cakes might not come with that iconic seaside aroma, but they're proof that small is beautiful. Really nice, nice and tasty. Wonderful. Mm. Are you going to try a bit with me? This is all about the taste. Is Falmouth in the mood for fish with flavour? That's really good. I like hot food, so it's quite nice and spicy for me. Yeah, that's really nice. Blimey, Chef Wan might be in with a chance after all. This is more of me. Really Best gorgeous. fish I've ever tried. <laughs> I'm ruined. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's really nice. 
It's absolutely delicious. So Falmouth certainly loves fish, but will it be Thai style or traditional that wins the day? The votes are in. The count is over. And the winner is fish and chips. <laughs> Congratulations, you guys did really well. Oh, come on, Chef Wan. You lost. Get over it. There's a student addicted to takeaways who still needs your help. Hey, have you finished? What happened? Uh, I haven't quite finished, and I did cut myself. Ugh. I don't think I'm just a natural cook. Oh. Okay, why don't I help to finish this, okay? So, we need a couple of yellow. Make it look really easy. It is. So, I want you to do some pounding. Oh, Kevin, they're very heavy. Now, we put the garlic inside. Have you seen dried shrimp before? No. Okay, they're dried because we soak in a bit of hot water. All of this goes and you're going to pound them. Oh, okay. Okay, so we pound them. Have it a go and try. It's good exercise, huh? Oh, it's heavier than you think. Yeah. <laughs> so you really need to bang it, yeah? Lauren can use dried shrimp and spices to perk up lots of her dishes. Now, right, we're ready to cook. Rule number one, the wok needs to get excited. So you take the oil, push them around, and then you throw in your shrimp together with the garlic. We are also going to add chilli. So give it a go and see how you use the wok, darling. This is the flavour basis for her stir-fried chicken with noodles. Take care of your heat so that it's not too high and you won't burn it, yeah? So next goes in your chicken. We're going to add a bit of this wonderful oyster sauce, yeah? Oh, I love oyster yeah, sauce. Yeah, oyster sauce a bit there. So one of my favourite which some people, when they fry noodle back in Malaysia, they don't put tomato ketchup, but I love it because we use a lot of tomato ketchup. And guess where we get the tomato ketchup? Britain. Yes, Britain. Ah. Because the British people, yeah, colonised Malaysia, yeah? God save the queen. <laughs> and don't forget, save Chef One too. So you give it a good stir, darling. Yeah. Then, a bit of light soya. Just a bit, not too much. And next thing comes the fish cake. We're going to put some lovely chicken stock. Yeah? Yeah. So the chicken stock goes there. So you're going to boil the chicken and everything. Let it cook for a few minutes. A little bit of sugar. Yeah? Sugar. Yes. Yeah. Yeah? White pepper. Now, next while that's happening, we're going to put all the hot vegetables. So, my tomato goes. So, mm, look at this. Yeah. You know, fresh. Oh, red pepper, green pepper. Remember I said? How colourful, yeah? Okay, we're going to leave this to simmer for a few minutes because you want the chicken to cook all the way through. Yeah. But you don't want the vegetable to be overcooked. I wonder, what would your mum think about this dish? I think she would love it. She, she would so. really like all the yeah. veg in it and all the flavours that are coming out of it. I can smell it. Yes. Last to go in, noodles and chopped fresh chives. But that's not all. Chef Wan has a second dish for Lauren. Prawn and tofu soup. Fry them a few minutes, the garlic, yeah? Just a drizzle of that oyster sauce again. As you can see that, we'll just use some soya. Because it's only white pepper. Why not the big, big pepper? You can if you want black, but because we're having tofu, tofu is white. It oh, looks okay. very, you know, very, very nice, wet and clean, so we want white. But if you like some specks of black, why not, yeah? Okay. That's it. Now a bit of chai. The stock. In goes the cubed tofu. That'll make a delicious and nourishing soup. So you bring that to a boil as soon as the prawn is cooked and the water starts to boil, yeah, you can immediately add the eggs, yeah? yeah. And just swirl it. Tonight's menu is Chinese chicken with stir-fried noodles, followed by prawn and tofu soup. Was it easy for you to cook? Yeah. Oh, that's lovely, Lauren. What's in it? Prawns, tofu, celery, chives, tomato. What's All that? The... That's the tofu. That's so tasty. Mm. Wow, this is lush. Did you cook this as well? With Chef Wan's help, and I definitely will make it in uni. The flavours are really nice, aren't they? It is quite hot, though. I added quite a lot of chilli to it. If you can cook like this while you're away, I'll be quite pleased. No more takeaways? No, definitely not. Good.
It's a winner. But how do the numbers add up? The bill for Lauren